Nancy Garcia. Nancy went missing from Asheboro, North Carolina on May 19, 2018. She stopped at the home of her ex-boyfriend on East Balfour Avenue that day to drop off their six-month-old baby. She then went to the ex-boyfriend's sister's home to ask if his sister could help take care of the infant. She reportedly said that her mother was sick and she had to go to Mexico to care for her. However, one post on a missing page on Facebook said she was expected back that afternoon to nurse the baby. This is a pretty big conflict because it's obviously not like North Carolina is a border town where she could just walk across. She would have either had to drive a long way or fly back. So I'm not sure how she could be expected back that day. And it also turned out when they contacted her mother in Mexico that her mother wasn't ill. The Asheboro Police Department performed a welfare check at Nancy's apartment on May 23rd after a co-worker reported that she had not shown up to work after a few days. This wasn't like her. She worked at a furniture factory for the past three years, and she'd been very responsible. It wasn't like her not to show up for work. The only clue as to her leaving is that she did make a few phone calls after her disappearance. It included a call to an out-of-state phone number. It appears those call logs haven't been released, however. Nancy always called her mother every Saturday without fail. Her mother said the last call was normal. She appeared upbeat and happy. Then the call stopped. She had attended a child's birthday party the day before she went missing, and everyone there said she seemed fine. Nothing appeared to be wrong. Her family is clear that she's a good mom and she wouldn't abandon her daughter. She was dedicated and her baby was born premature and was still breastfeeding. Either way, the police have found no evidence of foul play in her disappearance, but they do say that it's puzzling. She had said nothing to any of her friends about leaving. The car she was driving was a burgundy 2001 Chevy Impala with North Carolina license plate DFD2191. The car shown here is not her actual car, but a similar vehicle. There's no evidence that her car ever crossed the border into Mexico, and there's no evidence that she flew out of North Carolina. The car was never found in an airport, bus depot, or any other place she could have left from, much less any place at all. Nancy was born in Mexico and had four siblings. She had moved to North Carolina in 2011 or 2012, and she eventually became a U.S. citizen. It's highly unlikely she would leave permanently from Mexico, and especially unlikely that she would not contact her family or her child. She was living a stable life, so something is believed to have happened to her. If you have any information at all, please call the number listed. Her mother said in an interview, I am suffering every day since Nancy went missing. I just want to know where she is. I just want answers. Nancy's daughter is four now, and she deserves to know what happened to her mother. Nancy was 28 when she went missing. If she's still alive today, she's 32. Christina Lynn Bastion Christina was last seen in Apple Valley, California on November 1, 2015. She had been planning to spend the night with a female friend, but they had a disagreement and she left her friend's home at 1.45 a.m. along with her dog. Her dog was a small, tan and white Maltese named Coco. When she left, however, she left her wallet, her identification, and her glasses at her friend's home, and she desperately needed those glasses in order to see, and especially to drive. Despite this, she left in her vehicle, which was a silver two-door Dodge Ram 1500 pickup. It was spotted the next morning near Highway 247 and Bodick Road in Johnson Valley, California. She'd only owned it for two weeks, and when it was found, it had fresh dents and scratches on both sides. There was a note that it appeared to have been driven over rough desert terrain. It was later discovered that Coco had been found 
near the intersection of Bear Valley Road and Highway 18 on November 1st, 2015. This was the same day that Christina went missing. Finder of Coco placed a photo on a local missing and found animal page on Facebook for the area. A friend of Christina's mother spotted the dog and they were able to identify Coco conclusively. The woman was kind enough to keep caring for Coco while her family continued to look for Christina. Christina had taken a backpack with her and it was found on a dirt road near Bear Valley Road. They searched the surrounding area but found nothing. It's noted that Christina quit taking her bipolar medicine a few months before she disappeared. However, she seemed to be doing pretty well, but she had stated that God had healed her. As I've mentioned before, I had worked in this field, and bipolar especially is a hard diagnosis. Because even with medication working, it sometimes stops working, and there's a lot of severe ups and downs with bipolar. This can easily weigh heavily on a person. I have so much respect for those fighting bipolar symptoms because it's not easy, although medication can literally be a lifesaver. In Christina's case, it had caused extreme weight gain. It's possible she was struggling and keeping her symptoms to herself. This is in part why I talk about mental health so much on here, and I've been open about the fact that I also have a depression diagnosis. Mental health is important, and it's not something anybody should be ashamed of, because the truth is that it can happen to any of us, and it's not anything to be embarrassed by. Christina had been doing pretty well up until this time. She taught freshmen and sophomore English at Silverado High School, and she was working on getting her master's degree. She was also saving money to buy her own home. It's also logical that had she intended on disappearing, she would have taken her vehicle and her dog, and she wouldn't have left her eyeglasses behind. There were a few clues a few days before this happened that she may have been experiencing symptoms. She told others that someone had broken into her apartment a few days earlier and that she was scared to remain at home. This was why she was at her friend's house that night. She had removed most of her belongings from the house that meant the most to her. She did this because she said if someone broke in, she didn't want them to have it. Those items were left at her friend's house. It doesn't appear that there's any evidence indicating there actually was a break-in, but it's not impossible. There were other signs of paranoia that is often present with a number of different mental illnesses, such as she had taken the SIM card out of her phone because she believed people were tracking her. The day before she disappeared, she'd taken a 700-mile round trip to Phoenix, Arizona, and back in order to get away from those she feared were after her. Telling her brother-in-law that she didn't want to be Christina Bastion anymore saying she wanted to disappear. So it's not impossible she chose to flee her life, and her family described her as having mounting student loan debt. Her family doesn't know what to believe. They feel she may have tried to walk away, and while it wasn't typical for her, her mental illness might have affected her choice. They said she's a devout Christian who enjoys writing fictional stories. They believe it's unlikely she took her own life, If she left on foot, it's possible she may have perished and wasn't found. But it's possible she's out there somewhere. If anyone has any idea where she might be, please call the number shown. She's 5'6", has red hair. She was 34 when she went missing, and she would be 40 years old today. This tattoo is located on her left foot. Christina Lynn Bastion went missing from Apple Valley, California, six years ago. Hannah Emily Up. Hannah was last seen in St. Thomas in the U.S. Virgin Islands on September 14, 2017. She had survived Hurricane Irma, which had struck the island the week before, so it was surprising when she disappeared shortly after. But Hannah has disappeared before. Hannah had been living in New York City and had a job as a teacher when she went missing the first time. She went missing on the first day of school and wasn't found for around 20 days. In this instance, people were taking the Staten Island Ferry and they frantically alerted others that they saw a woman floating face down in the water about a mile off the southern tip of Manhattan. 
They were thankfully able to rescue her, and she was treated for hypothermia, sunburn, and dehydration. After this, she was transferred to a psychiatric unit. She told the authorities it felt like only 10 minutes had passed before she became herself again, but in truth, it took 20 days. She knew her name when she was found, but she had no idea how long she had been gone or what had happened in the meantime. The investigation finally uncovered she had been roaming around New York City. Testing found nothing wrong with her physically, and eventually a diagnosis of disassociative fugue, which is a rare type of amnesia. This diagnosis is usually caused by some sort of psychological trauma. However, Hannah couldn't remember any trauma at all, so it was puzzling. It's certainly possible, however, that something happened to Hannah that she doesn't remember. One of the weirdest factors in this case, too, is that during the New York City episode, she was caught on a surveillance camera entering a gym to shower and checking her email in an Apple store. She was even seen chatting with a classmate of hers. Yet when her mother saw footage, she could tell by Hannah's demeanor that something wasn't right. Hannah eventually moved in 2012 from New York City to Maryland, taking a job at a Montessori school located there. She was a Spanish teacher, and again, on the first day of school, she disappeared. She was found two days later in a creek, about a mile and a half from school. Despite this, she was allowed to return to work, and she seemed to be doing pretty well. The following year, she decided to move to St. Thomas, taking a job in the U.S. Virgin Islands at another Montessori school. No more disappearances happened, and school went on from year to year. It was four years later that it was discovered she left her sundress, sandals, car, and car keys at a small bar in Sapphire Beach. She usually snorkeled in this area. Hannah was a physically fit swimmer. She frequently went snorkeling. Her loved ones hope she's still alive, and they believe it's possible. They think she may have simply got on one of the many evacuation boats that were in the island due to the hurricanes and traveled to Florida, the Bahamas, St. Croix, or possibly Puerto Rico. Because of her history of disassociative events, it's possible she has no memory of who she is. She has three tattoos, two of which are shown here. A triangle with a wave on the inside of her right ankle, a sunflower on her right thigh, and a Venus symbol with an extra line on the left side of her lower torso. There is currently a GoFundMe fundraiser being put on by her mother to help fund a private investigator. If you recognize her, please call the number provided. Christina Lynn Bastian has been missing for five years. Thank you everybody for watching and listening. If you could help to get the channel noticed by the YouTube algorithm by liking and leaving a comment, even if you can just leave a thumbs up or some emoji, it counts as engagement. It would be so appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. Thanks everyone. Take care of yourselves and each other.